Bonjour from Paris, France, uh, day one of Euro PCR. I am here, my name is Roxana Moran from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, and I have the pleasure of having my colleague, friend from Marseille, Thomas Cuisset, who uh, presented uh, at the late breaking trial this morning a very important trial, a trial that really sets in question the issue that we clinicians face almost every day thinking about switching out the potent to be uh, uh, P2Y12 inhibitors uh, onto a less potent, like going from prasagrel, ticagrelor to clopidogrel. His question sets the stage for what do we do for ACS patients in whom the guidelines tell us 12 months of therapy. Can we cut that short and go to clopidogrel without causing ischemic events, but reduce bleeding. So with us is uh, Thomas. Thomas, tell us what you did in Topic. Yeah, in the, in the Topic study, we included ACS patients free of MACE at one month who were treated with PCI. And they were treated with DAPT, including aspirin and new P2Y12 blockers, namely Prasugrel or Ticagrelor. And patients were randomized between switch DAPT with switch to aspirin and clopidogrel, or the standard of care with unchanged DAPT up to one year. And the patient were followed up to one year post ACS. We randomized 323 patients in each group in the switch and in the unchanged DAPT groups. And at one year, we observed a reduction of the primary endpoint, which was related to a reduction of bleeding complication in the group of patients we were switched after one month. And we did not observe any difference for the different ischemic events, including the stent thrombosis between the two groups in this study. So you are able to actually take patients with acute coronary syndromes, and your, your premise was really correct. A lot of the ischemic events happen early. I saw you present that. But the bleeding is a gift that keeps on giving, yeah. keeps on giving. Uh, and so you said, well, after a month, maybe we're done with this potent therapy and we can go to a lesser potent therapy and still preserve the patients. What do you think is the biggest limitation of your study? I think it was a single center and open label study, which is one methodological li limitation, but also the sample size, because we say that we have 650 patients more or less. So that was probably side to show a difference in bleeding complication, but that was not side to show potential difference in infrequent endpoints such as stent thrombosis or mortality. So in my Twitter feed today, I tweeted, great study, small sample size, funny endpoint, a big endpoint, death, no myocardial infarction, urgent revascularization, yes. bark to bleeding, and stent thrombosis. Is that right? That was right. the endpoint. Correct, yes. So, BARC2 bleeding, and all of it was driven with the BARC2 bleeding. Why not Timmy Major Minor or BARC3 and more bleeding? That was related to the sample side of the study, and we use a quite liberal definition of bleeding. And if we look at the BARC bleeding 3, 4, or 5, we observed a numerically lower rate of bleeding in the switch DAPT group but which was no longer statistically significant because of the sample size. But still, I think inclusion of BARC2 bleeding really makes sense, as BARC2 bleeding can have a real impact on patient outcome, because it might be the first cause of early discontinuation of DAPT and consequently potential thrombotic event. And also it has a huge impact on the quality of life of the patient. And I think as physician, we should improve outcome, increase the lower the mortality, but also improve the quality of life in the daily life of the patient. That's why we choose to include I mean, I think BARC that's bleeding. a really key point because BARC2, we've shown it uh, that it's really associated with non-adherence. A lot of the patients who don't adhere is because they're having these bleeding episodes that are maybe minor for us, but it's not minor not for them. And non-adherence is one of the biggest issues about ischemic events. I guess the big issue to um, everyone's mind is, is it safe to do this? Safe meaning, can I really be sure that I'm not gonna have stent thrombosis? Do you think we have to choose patients better or do we need a bigger trial? Yeah, I think that's a very good point, Roxana. And 
looking at the sample size of the study, and as we had for any question on antithrombotic strategy, now I think that the, we have two next challenge. The first one is probably to confirm those results that it's safe to switch after one month, either in large registry or in larger randomized controlled trial. And the next challenge will be to select which patients are the good candidate to be switched after one month and in which patient it's probably safer to keep potent P2Y12 blockers up to one year without switching after one month. So when you switched, one other question, I know this paper is going to be open to the European Heart Journal today online. I mean, incredible. Did you load them again with clopidogrel or did you just give them a clopidogrel maintenance dose? No. We did not load the patient and we just start with maintenance dose, with, which really makes sense when you switch from prasugrel to clopidogrel. For ticagrel, you can discuss whether we need or not to load the patient. But what we did, we wait at least 18 hours between the last ticagrel dose and the start of the clopidogrel maintenance dose to avoid drug-drug interaction, which can occur between ticagrel and clopidogrel. So I want to congratulate you. This is an area that is completely data poor, uh, anemic in data, no pun intended, but you were able to actually, for the first time, do a real switching study. I'm hoping that you're planning topic two with a much larger study. This is a, a very important clinical question for practitioners. It's a real uh, health uh, issue for our patients. And congratulations to you. And this paper now is um, online for all of your viewing. And uh, thank you so much thank for you, being Rachel. here. And thank you. thank you all for having us.